In today's news, has Gary Gensler and his SEC been playing 4D chess while the rest of us have been playing checkers? In this post from XRP Drops, it highlights two clips from the digital asset investor that Ripple could possibly pay its fine to the SEC in XRP or face possible confiscation of XRP by the SEC. Let's take a look. Let's say that let's say this the settlement was for for nine hundred million dollars. What I would do is say, well, hey Ripple, um, just give me more XRP instead of nine hundred million. Give me one billion worth of XRP instead. That's the point Molly's making here. Let's even say they had to pay a billion dollar fine. Right, right. What do you think they're going to pay that fine in? Mm. XRP. Right. So the <laughs> cartel's like, we wanted 50% of the XRP in the beginning. If you had just given us half, like wow. we asked, and we wouldn't have wow. given you a hard time, but you didn't really want to be controlled by the mob. So you said no. Wow. But now at the end of it, we're still going to take our cut if you would like us to get out of the way and let you do your thing. Folks, you can see the writing on the wall. Does anybody remember this? This was Jeremy Hogan a long time ago, back when this lawsuit was going on. I put this out on Feb in February of 2023, but I think that he recorded this even before that during the lawsuit. Listen to this. And if Ripple is nervous about the potential outcome of the case, I can even see them agreeing to pay a percentage of any sales of the escrowed XRP, or if you want to get really deep state thinking, Ripple could even agree to confiscation of a certain amount of the es escrowed XRP to the state. Now, Ah, confiscation of some of the escrowed XRP to the state. In other words, pay the SEC off, the mafia, pay them off with XRP, let them confiscate some of the XRP. Was this what it was always about, folks? So therefore, could the potential goal of the SEC not be to protect investors, which is their job, but rather to squeeze out as much as possible from Ripple and quite frankly, the whole crypto industry so they can make as much profit as possible. Because remember, ultimately, the SEC is a government agency and will act in accordance with their goals. In the words of Ripple co-founder Chris Larson, this tyranny of Gary Gensler has to stop. For that, the judge really admonished the SEC, uh, really called them out in a way that you don't really see very often. I think it's just more proof that Gary Gensler's uh, decision of sort of engaging this regulation by enforcement, rather than getting clear laws, he knows they're not clear. He just likes that lack of clarity so that he can go after anybody and make up the rules as he goes along through bullying. And that's not the American way. This should be a Congress. We should have clear rules from the legislatures, not through these sort of unelected, power hungry, and really misplaced decision makers that you see in Gary Gensler. It's the power hungry and quite frankly corrupt actions of Gary Gensler that has resulted in America falling so far behind. He has stifled crypto and America's innovation time and time again and it has had catastrophic consequences. They have made allegation after allegation but they have no proof of any victims that bought XRP at this time at least not to the fault of XRP to which this is explained in this video of Scott Melkler and Meta Lawman so listen very very closely. The bigger argument here in my view is uh ripple caught a very very lucky break recently the second circuit court of appeals ruled at the end of last year that in order for there to be disgorgement there have to be victims of the fraud victims of the securities law violation there has to be something called pecuniary harm and that means losses actual losses so when you read the sec's filing on their damages theory, they have a heading saying, hey, no problem, there's pecuniary harm here, but they don't actually identify a single purchaser of XRP who lost money. What they say is some purchasers, and remember, we're talking about sophisticated institutional buyers, hedge funds, VCs, you know, whales, buying XRP, and they bought at discounts and then presumably sold, not the next day, but periodically. And so the SEC says some of the buyers got a lower discount than others, and therefore they were pecuniarily harmed, which does violence to that term. There have to be actual losses, and they do not identify a single quote-unquote victim 
uh, uh, institution that lost money in their deal because they bought all of this XRP at some significant discounts. Yeah, and, and just to, to tie a bow on it, this concept of disgorgement, uh, while it is a party who's done something wrong, issued an unregistered security, is supposed to give back their net profit from doing that, that money is supposed to go to victims not to the treasury and so if there are no victims the entire rationale for the disgorgement goes away and so if there's no disgorgement by the way scott then there's no 200 million in interest right. interest triggers off of disgorgement and so that would go away now caveat is you could still have a penalty in the absence of victims and a, a disgorgement judgment but it would be weird for an 850 million dollar penalty in a situation where there's no disgorgement, no victims, no restitution fund, no nothing, that would be pretty odd. And so the, the court then would have a lot of discretion in establishing what the penalty might be. And I think it'd be substantially lower than that 850. Now, what's quite funny, if that's the right word I could even use, is there's no evidence that Ripple has caused any victims in this case. But the SEC, the amount of money and the amount of victim the SEC has caused as a result of this lawsuit is a complete other story. And quite frankly, they are not going to stop. As now highlighted in this video from the Crypto Hulk, Coinbase loses against the SEC, which is very bad news for, for the Hulk of the industry, as Coinbase is the second large crypto exchange in the world, and the largest one in America. So now, in the words of Ripple Chief Legal Officer Chris Larson, rereading Wednesday's Coinbase ruling, basically the SEC has sold the judge a bill of goods that she has to accept as true at this stage of the case. But now comes the hard part producing evidence to which he believes and his bet is that the SEC is all hat and no cattle. The SEC has once again made allegations with no proof to back it up. And as covered in this post from Fox Business journalist Anna Terrett, what is next for Coinbase in this lawsuit? Well, the court will set a full discovery schedule and each side can request documents for the discovery process, which is very, very similar to what happened with Ripple and XRP against the SEC. This process acted like a window to get into the mind of the SEC and the same thing vice versa. So both industries, both institutions can kind of play chess and figure out who's doing what. So that's what's going to happen next. And in terms of how long this will take, well, in the Ripple case, this discovery process took many, many months. And then after that, you have the process of filing summary judgment briefs and then the potential trial on top of that. So this case for Coinbase will likely drag on for a year at the very, very minimum. Hopefully it won't be as long as Ripple, which took three years and it's still going. But ultimately, in my opinion, I am with Drew Olderotti that the SEC once again is just fighting tooth and nail and and as a result, they're going to be wasting millions of dollars of government resources for no avail because they have no idea what they're doing seemingly. They're just trying to be bullies, but they have no evidence of such, which is why time and time again, they continue to lose in the courts. And Ripple has been the one leading this charge. In due time, Ripple and XRP will get a settlement deal and XRP therefore will soar in value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.